Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, uh, just this is going to kind of be an update episode because uh, a lot of things have been happening here in the, in the save in the playthrough. Um, so let's see where to start. I guess the first thing that I will point out is that the other factions have really stepped it up in uh pushing the xenon out and and defeating the xenon which is which is cool um and and just just kind of as a quick side note i've had a couple of different comments about how once the xenon are defeated the game kind of starts to stagnate with the economy and stuff i'm aware of that um and i'm even expecting it uh, but for this particular playthrough you know that was kind of our goal to 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 push back or even eliminate the xenon, and <clears throat> make this a peaceful place uh, for everybody to prosper. You know, kind of idea. Um, there will be you know I have future playthroughs planned where you know the strand will be quite a bit different than that, but um, for this particular playthrough, things are actually going exactly the way that I had hoped that they would. Now, if I decide to continue this playthrough, um. You know, even after the Xenon are gone and after we've kind of done everything there is to do, we do have the option of going to war with one or more of the factions. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it could happen. So we'll just have to see. Um, but I would, uh, the other thing that, you know, re <clears throat> excuse me, related to that too is that I probably am not going to do any story mode stuff in this playthrough because, be and because you know, I'm already so far along you know, and have so much money and, and all that, that um, I think, you know, doing the story, uh, although it would still be fun to do it for the sake of the story itself, the rewards or whatever we might get from that are just going to be me. Um, so what I'm kind, what I kind of have in mind is that we do what we might call a story mode series where we go through and we start and, and we focus primarily on going through the stories and probably in the order, you know, that the DLCs came out. So we would start again with a young gun start, but but we would immediately go into the, you know, the Hatikva storyline and, you know, the original uh, storyline of, uh, you know, the original game. And then next we would do Split Vendetta. Then next we would do Tides of Avarice. Then next we would do or Cradle of Humanity, whatever the order of those are. So that's kind of what I have in mind, you know, for future playthroughs. And I think, you know, when we do the Tides of Avarice, that's probably when we will also do our pirate playthrough, because I, I kind of wanted to do a pirate playthrough too. We could, uh, you know, we could start that now uh, and continue this save too and just have two kind of parallel series going. So anyway, I, I have to kind of think about that, but just kind of give, give you guys an idea of what I have in my mind for, you know, what's up and coming. Okay, so let's get back to where we are here and now so the holy order has um pushed the xenon out of faulty logic one and they now own this sector as you can see and are setting up stations and defense platforms and they are most likely going to be pushing into faulty logic seven um and they've already also pushed the xenon uh, out of Atias, uh, Atias or Atias Misfortune 3, uh, because this was originally a Xenon sector. So the Holy Order has just taken the fight to the Xenon down here uh, in the south of the map. So right now, um, they still exist here, uh, but I don't have any recon down there, and they still exist here at the moment. And this, you know, this information is old information too. It, it, it could, you know, could have been updated. So right now, you know, they're pushed back to here. As far as I know, but again, this is old information. They don't even have, well, see, we got a ship coming from here. So they could have something built, being built over there. Uh, but if they don't have a, a war for a shipyard in Frontier Edge, they're pretty much screwed down here in the south. Uh, as we already know, the Terran have pushed uh, the Xenon out of Getsufuni and Savage Spur too. But the Terran cannot get to Savage Spur 1 because there's no way to get into this sector. You can only come out of it, which is kind of odd, but that's the way that it is. Um, so so the Terran pretty much have the Xenon completely wiped out as far as they can go with them over in this section. 
Over here, um, the Paranid have completely annihilated <laughs> the Xeon. Uh, Xenon, sorry. Uh, I, or, or Xenon. I think I'm actually supposed to pronounce it Xenon, but I'm so used to calling them Xenon that I might I might just keep doing that just because I'm old. Can't teach an old old guy new tricks. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Um So yeah, they've they they've <laughs> They've completely just, you know, the Xenon, for all intents and purposes, don't even exist over in this section anymore. Um, they still, you know, they're still going to be in this section. And, you know, the Terran have come in here to try and, you know, push them out. I've seen them, you know, take Asgards in, but, you know, in usual stupid ass AI fashion, they send one Asgard in there with no support and it eventually gets killed. Um, but you know, at least they're making, making the effort. So, um, Tharkis Cascade, uh, 17, it looks like, and Matrix 79 Bravo and Savage Spur 1, that will probably hold out for, uh, until I myself deal with them. Uh, likewise, unless Family Zareth really starts to kick it into gear, uh, Matrix fi uh, 598 will probably also have to take care of ourselves when the time comes, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind, um, you know, battling the Xenon again in the f in the near future uh, with a better fleet than what we've had so far. Uh, but here, again, unless Zyrus Dominion decides, you know, to really kick it up and start going after them, uh, I have not, in my particular playthrough, the split just haven't really seemed to done much, uh, you know, have done much. And, and I think, you know, in part it's just because you know, they they had to deal with, uh, on both, you know, the Zyarth side and on the Free Family side, you know, with the Xenon just pounding them. And we didn't even discover the split until a little bit later on, and the Free Family's even later than that. So I'm sure that has something to, to do with it. The cool thing about this game, though, is every time you start a new game, it all resets and it all changes, and it can play out, you know, much differently in, in um, subsequent playthroughs, which is really cool. Nobody's done anything here uh, with Tharka's Ravine 4. Um, I know it's all the way on the end of the, the the network here, but, I mean, this place has amazing resources for for gas, for the gases and for ice, um, but nobody's done anything with it. So, I don't know. I mean, I, it, I, it doesn't appeal to me a whole lot just because it's way the hell out of the way, you know? So, anyway... And then, uh, yeah, Talati. Yeah, Talati have pushed the Xenon out of scale plate green 7. And I've seen them making excursions with pretty sizable fleets down into here to scale plate green 1. So if they keep that pressure up, the Xenon will probably be wiped out down there as well. Um, so, yeah, the Xenon are definitely being diminished. I expect, like I said, I expect that I will do final battle with them in Matrix 79B and Matrix 598 uh, when the time comes. I don't see the races, the other factions, trying to push them out of there until we can get to them. Okay, so more updates. I have placed a defense tower in uh, Family Crit, and it's interesting. I mean, I had just barely finished with this process and I even still had I even still had my rattlesnake and Osaka's protecting position on the other side of the gate when an I and two K's came came you know bearing down and so I had to pull the rattlesnake and the Osaka out of there quickly uh, back over to here and then the the defense tower just annihilated them here's the footage from that it's really cool
Explosion imminent. Danger. Explosion imminent. Okay, so yeah, these these defense towers are just bad ass. Oh, you know what? Look at that. They got a they're trying to set up a new wharf here. We'll have to keep an eye on that. What I've noticed them doing those they start a new building, but then they they can't get resources to it, so it just sits there. But we do, you know, we'll have to deal with that at some point, but I'm not too worried about it right at the moment. And then I also have placed a defense tower here in Zyroth's Dominion 1 uh, to block them in uh, on that side too. Now these these towers don't 100% block them. Smaller ships can get through, but it almost always stops the larger ships and it stops a good percentage of the smaller uh, ships. So it, it's effective enough, you know, to hold them at bay. Okay, so that gets us updated on all of that stuff. Um, Reavers Matrix 9 is, you know, we're doing pretty good over here. Um, I have assigned to this station. Uh, which is producing hull parts, but it's also a defense station and an administration building. Uh, I have five, or no, I guess I have two vultures assigned to them, and uh, one ore, ore miner and one gas miner. And it looks like the gas is full at the moment. Um, but what I didn't do is I didn't assign a wing of fighters to protect those guys because there's been very little pirate activity. In fact, there's only been one pirate attack in this entire time so far. Now, I know that might change as time goes on. Uh, and so what I've done is I've just put uh, the dragon up here with a uh, a wing of, of Nodans. And if, you know, if we do get an attack, then they're in a, a pretty good spot to to come in and, and deal with the, with the threat. It's funny, too, because the last pirate that attacked or tried to get my guy to drop his cargo, it was right at the platform. And so what I've been doing more recently is when, when I when they say, hey, I've been ordered to drop my cargo, I teleport to the ship because I've found that um, when you, you know, if, if you have like a wing of fighters, if I order these fighters to attack that pirate and I'm out of sector, it takes them forever to do it. And sometimes they take damage and it's just, it's very, very inefficient. But if I teleport into the system... Um, what I do is I jump into the vulture or the cormorant or whatever it is, and I, I get away from the bad guy, and I sick the fighters on them, and they, they kill them, you know, usually within under a minute. So it's just, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt for me because i got to teleport over there, but, um, you know, we're talking about the fighters eliminating the threat in, you know, 45 seconds to a minute as opposed to 5 to 10 to 15 minutes if I'm not in sector. It's just, you know, it's so interesting how... You know, the AI works differently in sector and out of sector. Okay, so let's see. So that's it for our builds. I have added, I, I ended up having to add some more build storage to the building supplies depot uh, because, you know, we started running out of space, container storage and liquid storage in particular. And this thing is just, you know, as expected, cranking out the resources like crazy. And I have, uh, I have adjusted everything so that it keeps what it needs um you know so for example spices need you know I have a consumption of 14,760 so i just have it adjusted to 15,000 and then anything that's in the green here is for sale and so now i've got uh i got both transporters well mostly transporters assigned to the station and all they're doing is ferrying all of this product uh, from here over to the trading station, uh, which is making us a lot of money. Uh, so that's working out really good. Our trading station in two grand, um, not as profitable as our, our, our one in, in Reaver's Fortune. And I, I kept trying to tweak the prices on it, and it just wasn't performing very well. So I finally said, screw it. I put everything on automatic pricing, and once I did that, it's starting, it's starting to make more money. Now, it's still not making money at the level as our Reaver's Fortune trading station, but it's making more money than it was when I was trying to manually adjust things. So, you know, that way I don't got to worry about it. And um, as long as it's making a profit, it's it's good to go. Okay, so let's see. 
I have also uh, purchased a Raptor. Um, and it is in the process now of being complete. The reason I bought this before I, I, I was going to buy this, you know, in this episode because it's pretty, you know, pretty uh, big milestone to get the best carrier in the game. Um, but I got such a good price on it at, um, let's see, where are we making this at? At the, at the Warforge. Okay. I, the same Raptor, the same exact configuration, just right here at the split, uh, shipyard in the same exact sector was like another 12 million more. Uh, and the one in free families was also quite a bit more. And so plus the fact that it only needed a couple of, you know, like some advanced electronics and something else, uh, just small amounts. I figured, you know what, I'm going to do this now, take advantage of it. Um, so that way we purchase our Raptor. Now this is a bare bones Raptor. Um, let's take a look at it actually. So, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so basically I have a configuration that has no guns and no shields. Um, and the price is, is quite a bit more now. It was like 40 Three forty-four something when I bought it yesterday. Now the price has gone up, uh, so that's why I wanted to take advantage of it. Uh, but this Raptor has no shields and it has no turrets on it, um, and that's because, as you can imagine, what I'm going to do is uh, assign it a wing of fighters to keep it protected, and I'm going to take it down to Terran space and fit Terran shields on it, and take it to Argon space and fit um, Argon turrets on it. Uh, but it has, uh, I have the all around engine on it because the difference between that and the travel engine is, is just negligible. Uh, it's got the Mark II thruster. It's got no shields, like I said. Uh, it's got no turrets or shields for the turrets, like I said. Uh, the engine also shouldn't have, yeah, the engine doesn't have any shields either. It's got all the software. Um, it's got cargo, a few cargo drones, uh, 15 repair drones, a, a few satellites and laser towers and that sort of thing, and then a full crew complement. So it is definitely a very bare bones Raptor because again we have to, we're gonna have to fly it elsewhere to to fully get it kitted out. But I'm excited, man. This uh, the the Raptor is hands down the best carrier in the game. Um, I've I've compared it with the only other one that maybe even sort of kind of comes close to it is the Tokyo, but even the Tokyo is not, uh, you know, it doesn't compare to the Raptor. <clears throat> um, primarily, well, there, there's two things about the ship that makes it so good. It's got the most turrets out of all the carriers. I mean, it's just it's got an ungodly number of turrets. Look. <laughs> turrets at this thing has i mean i've even thinking about kind of experimentally loading this sucker up with nothing but plasma turrets across the board have a fighter wing to protect it from small ships and actually use it as a destroyer i mean if all of these are plasma turrets they're going to annihilate a k or a station um so i'm thinking about that i know that's not what the main role of this vessel is but it could it could work in that role, you know. So I'm just thinking about it just to try it experimentally. But you know, the normal loadout, of course, would be to put plasmas on the larges, and then a mixture of you know beam turrets and flak turrets in the smalls. That that would be the the normal loadout for it. Uh, so it's got it's got a bunch of turrets, but also the Raptor carries the most ships out of all the other carriers, which is really the primary role of this ship, and that alone makes it superior to any of the other ships. It's a little weaker on the shield side, but it's got an, an, an enormous amount of hull, you know, typical sh uh, split uh, ship situation right there. So anyway, um, this guy should be done here pretty soon. And then, like I said, we're going to send <coughs> a wing of fighters up to to just escort it. Um, and then my plan for the for the loadout is I'm going to do a wing of interceptors. Uh, which will be she's with probably re bolt repeaters. And then I'm going to do a wing of bombers, which will also probably be she's or, or maybe chimeras. I mean, she's and chimeras are the two heavy fighters that, that I think, you know, that appeal the most to me. The problem with the chimeras though, is that they have really weak shields. And so they're, they're a little more prone to, to damage 
Um, but they, but they have there's their speed and their firepower is un, you know is unrivaled for for any fighter. So I'll have to think about that. But I'm going to have a wing of bombers, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use blast mortars instead of torpedoes, so that I don't have to screw around with having to resupply torpedoes <clears throat> uh, because that's just kind of a pain in the butt. And the ship itself doesn't have enough capacity to resupply a large wing of, of bombers with torpedoes. It just doesn't. So that means you have to take them to a station and resupply them. Now, if and when we get a station set up that's manufacturing those torpedoes, it might be more viable to do that. But in the meantime, I think we're going to go with blast mortars. Now, I'm going to have to be more careful with managing that uh, those bombers with the blast mortars uh, so that you know they pull away before the ship or station or whatever it is explodes, especially uh, with a station. So I'm going to have to manage that, but I think I can do it if you know if if we're careful uh, in that regard. <clears throat> okay. So anyway, that's uh, that's very cool. Very excited to to get this Raptor up and running. Um, so I think I think the other thing to update you on is we are ready to start our shipyard build. And this is going to be a huge project and it's going to take a while. And I'm going to do almost all of it off camera, but but I'm I'm at least going to kind of walk you through what the, what the process is, you know, how the process is going to start. <clears throat> Excuse me. So <clears throat> I've got something in my throat today. So let's start by we'll put the crop or the crop plot, the the plot, <laughs> crop plot uh, down. And I think I'm just going to build it right next to the trading station in this area here. I thought about putting it on the other side uh, or even to the south, um, which I suppose we could do. I mean, we've got we've got tons of room, absolute tons of room. Um, I suppose we could put it to the south. It's just that this. Um, this line's going to be kind of a pain in the butt visually. I know I can turn it off, but I kind of like to keep those lines on. If we go to the filter, and we ecliptic lines, rec lines. Why is that grayed out? Gate connections. Oh, okay. So the filter, apparently I already had turned those off. Oh, but they still show up if you move your cursor down there. Whereas here they just show up all the time. Hmm. Okay. Well, I know that's not a big deal and it's not going to functionally affect anything. It's just, I don't know might be kind of irritating to always have that line right over the station it at the end of the day it really doesn't matter that much so you know what i'm just going to put the shipyard over here okay so we want to make the absolute largest plot that the game will allow which is an 18 by 18 by 18 what's that? actually it's a 20 by 20 by 20 so i don't know I don't know why this says 18 and that says 20, but whatever. Okay, so let's create the plot, and we're going to put this plot right parallel with these other guys. That looks pretty good right there, I think. Oh, actually... I think that outer border is just like a buffer zone, which makes sense. So we actually want to put it right about there so that the actual plot is more or less lined up with those. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined up, but close enough to where it's not an unnoticeable eyesore. And so I want to move it forward just a little more that way. Yeah, that's pretty darn close. Okay, good. Um, so let's click continue. 
And then I'm just going to leave the plot here for the moment. But uh, the plot's now in place. So that's where our shipyard is going to be once it is built. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I spent a little bit of time uh, like I did with the building supplies depot. Only I used um, Visio this time to diagram this out. So let me show that to you. Okay, so the plan here is, <clears throat> excuse me, that this is going to be, you know, three levels. Uh, well, I, I should say three main levels, but with room to expand vertically and horizontally as needed. So the, the top level, which will be up towards the top of the plot and not expandable upwards beyond what it needs, is this upper level here. So what we'll do is we'll put an E pier. We'll have um, an eight uh, medium dock and then two um, three by six small docks. Right behind that dock, we will place a fabrication bay. And that's where we'll manufacture our small ships and our corvettes. And I might, it, I might eventually even put two of these here. We'll see. Behind that, we'll put a large ship bay so we can make destroyers. And behind that, we'll put an XL ship bay for you know the biggest ships. And then behind that, I will put all the habitats. And we will. Uh, I'll leave enough room uh, to make the habitats. Probably. Um. Maybe four high, uh, or at least three high. I, I have a I have enough room to make them three high on my building depot, so we might follow that same thing. And then this will be at the very top and in the you know top center of the plot. Now below that, then on what I'm calling the main level, will be, uh, or maybe I should just call it the second level, will be the um, another E pier. And then a wall of energy cells facing the sun. Oh, you know what? I forgot about that. <sighs> I might move the plot to the south after all so the energy so the solar panels are facing the sun. Now, I know I don't think it ma actually matters in reality, but, you know, if you're going to set up a solar panel, it needs to face the sun. Uh, I don't think that matters in this game, but it matters to me. So that... That means we are going to build this to the south. So that way these energy cell panels, and remember, this is just a top view too, uh, I will be facing the sun. I just want to do it that way. Behind the energy cells, then we'll put our storage. So, you know, we're going to need lots of liquid, solid, and even more container storage. And then we have all of our end product um, modules. So hull parts, engine parts, antimatter converters, weapon components, advanced electronics, Turret components, field coils, shield components, advanced composites, drone, missile, and smart chips. And these shapes here are not necessarily representative of it, of what those uh, modules actually look like, but they're, you know, it's close enough. Uh, this is just to kind of give me a, a, a basic roadmap to follow. And then further down in the plot, you know, closer, you know, towards the bottom, but not all the way to the bottom, will be our intermediate level stuff. Now, I've left room to continue to expand the containers and uh, the solar panels down even further vertically if necessary. I probably won't need to go that far down, but just in case, we will keep that space open. And then we're going to have refined metals, silicon wafers, graphene, microchips, um, uh, superfluid, I guess that's what that's called. I can't remember. Yeah, superfluid. Uh, quantum tubes, plasma conductors, antimatter cells, and scanning arrays uh, in this lower section. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of what, you know, what the plan is for this build. It is going to take a very long time. And like I said, the majority um, of this build I will do off camera and, and just, you know, kind of update you on how it's coming together. But again, because of the solar, uh, you know, the direction of the solar panels, um, I'm going to actually move the plot to the south of the gates. And that's just where it's going to go. And let's put it right about here. And, you know, we'll just have to deal with the, with the line, but I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. Okay, cool. 
So let's turn, um, oh, let me turn something off here. Okay. So yeah, that got pretty much guys get you updated on where we are here in our playthrough. <coughs> is our, is our Raptor done? Nope. It still has about seven more minutes. Okay. So I'm going to cut the camera and then I'm going to fly a squadron of fighters up to the Raptor. And when it's finished and ready to go, we'll uh, we'll take a, a, a flyby of it and kind of admire it a little bit. And then we'll wrap up this particular episode. Oh, there is one other thing I wanted to show you. Um, I went ahead and purchased an Irukanji, Irukanji Scout. I think that's how you pronounce that. Um, because Captain Collins, if you haven't already seen it, he just recently put out a, a new, an updated video on the best ships in X4, you know, with the Kingdom in expansion. And I watched that, and he pointed out that this Irukanji is now the fastest scout ship in the game. It's it's even it's significantly faster even than the Pegasus. So this is the new ship to use if you want the absolute fastest ship in the game. So let's check, let's take this for a little a speed run here. So I decked this ship out. I, I bought the best of the best for it. It cost me a little over two million. Um, and I kind of am thinking about maybe switch it. Oh, nice autosave. It always happens at the most inconvenient time. <laughs> but it's actually saved my butt a couple times because it saved, you know, for me when, when I forgot to kind of thing. So that's why I keep it on. Anyway, um, so I put the high end thrusters on this and it, it's super squirrely, um, almost too squirrely. So if we, um, let's go ahead and take off here. So especially in this mode, I mean, it is, I am barely moving my stick and this thing is just all over the place. So I'm thinking about maybe taking it back and, and toning, you know, the thruster down on it because it is, it's just so squirrely. Either that or I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll just learn how to get used to it. I've got ion pulse, uh, an ion pulse weapon on it. Uh, but this thing is just incredibly fast. So, so check this out. Um, well, yeah, actually let's take a quick look at it. It's, it's kind of cool looking too, really, if you think about it. A little weird, weird but neat boron design. Um, okay, so, so check this out. What I'm going to, you know, it goes um, 500 and some odd meters just on normal power, which is itself pretty fast. But um, let's, um, let's point like towards the gate, I guess. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost all the way until we run out of shields. And that in and of itself has got us uh, up to 6,000. Okay, now I'm going to kick the travel drive in. Watch how fast this thing gets up to. It is just mind-blowingly fast. So the Peggy tops out at 8,000 and some odd meters per second. 10,000 and 700 kilometers per second. <laughs> it's so damn fast. I can't hardly, hardly believe it. Okay, let's, um, we need to kind of be flying past stuff to, to really get the sense of how fast this thing's moving. So let's point back towards the rings. 10.7. Oh man, that is just so freaking awesome. So yeah, this is this is definitely uh, my new scout ship for sure. And and in the future, it'll be our go-to scout ship for everything. I still have several Pegasus, so we'll keep using them until they succumb. But <laughs> it's so fast. It's, I just love it, man. It's so cool. Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm gonna cut the camera here, guys. I'll meet you guys up. Uh, at the Raptor when it's finished. We'll take a, a, a nice little flyby of it. All right, guys. Here she is. Uh, let's get rid of the HUD. And I think we'll even get rid of the... Well, the HUD and the ship hull. So let's... We got the sun right in our face, so let's look at this first from uh, straight on here. 
It looks, <laughs> it looks like a big monster with a mouth open. Oh, this ship is so neat. I've seen it in action, you know, several times on, on YouTube videos. It's got those, like, running lights. It's just so cool. Yeah, this is this is definitely the the premier carrier ship in this game, hands down. It's cool looking. It's absolutely enormous, as you can see. Um, I don't know how it compares to the Tokyo in terms of size, but it's it's far far larger than all the other carriers that I've looked at. And then this is the actual docks. Now, the the other thing about the Raptor too is that it can, it has 21 um, surface, uh, what I'll call surface docks that we're looking at right now. So you can have 21 ships immediately ready to launch, but it can hold inside up to a hundred small vessels. And then it also can hold, I don't know, like 10 medium vessels or something like that. Um, so. Yeah, it, you just can't beat it for for the amount of capacity that it has for the small ships. Whoa. Uh, so we're actually traveling through this in reverse. The, the fighters actually come in this way and go out the front. And then this is a... Th there's only one external or surface medium ship dock, which is this right here. And then we come to the rear of it, and it's got this massive, massive engine on the back. Hey, the splitter building another capital vessel. That's good. I like to. It's good to see their economy starting to recover. Look at that! <laughs> Look at that huge engine. Oh, that is just so cool. Enormous. So yeah, the um, the fighters actually come in this way so when they're when they're called back to the ship they fly down through here and then they land on these docking pads here and then are taken down inside and stored or repaired or whatever and then when you launch them they all just lift off and fly out through the front Um, they come all the way out through the front here following the running lights. And then once they're out of the ship, they, they take off and go do their thing. So, yeah, Egosoft just knocked it out of the park with, with this ship. Um, let's do a quick flyby of the top of it here. It's just enormous. I don't know how this ship compares... This must be the bridge. Oh, look at that. I don't think we can actually see inside of it. Um, that's cool. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I don't know how it compares to the Asgard in terms of size, but I think this is probably the largest ship in the game. Um, pretty sure that it is. Uh, or at least the longest ship in the game. So cool. All right, so let's go ahead and dock, and we'll take 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 a look on the inside. My fighter wing should be on their way here. I'm gonna have to bring this back and this back. Yeah, so they're still they're still coming to us. Actually, you know what? Before we before we do this, I just want to see what the splitter making over here oh they're making another raptor oh that's awesome all right you go split super cool okay um so let's dock raptor oh wrong button kanji Docking granted. So do we... Where do we dock? I'm 
not seeing the dock lights. Do we just dock down here too, like the rest of the fighters? Okay, hold on. Stop the ship. Docking aborted. Docking granted. Yeah, we do. Okay. We just dock down here like all the rest of the ships. Oh, maybe this... This dock is not... Successfully docked. Here, let's let's undock for a second. I want to look at something. So this dock here doesn't have the red don't go here. So this is probably the player dock. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. No, not necessarily, because there's supposed to be twenty-one usable docks. So pro we probably just dock and then it stores our ship and then puts another one in its place once it's there. That's probably what the deal is here. Okay. Docking granted. Successfully docked. Okay, cool. So I wonder if once we... I'll wait for you to tell me to take off. Uh, no, I don't want you to take off. Yeah, you wait. I actually have the Irakanji um, defaulted to Reaver's headquarters. That is a cool looking little ship though, isn't it? Okay, let's, um, man, this, it, it's, it's just absolutely enormous when you look at it on foot. So cool. Um, can we, it's probably not going to let us walk past this dock here, I'll bet. Yeah, it's got a, like a wall here, so we can't get up there. Okay, let's, um, let's go to the upper dock, the medium dock first, so we can kind of have a, let's see, Reaver's dock area, travel, this is probably the upper dock, so we can kind of just see it from on foot, from outside here. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh, you guys, look, <laughs> look how enormous this ship is, I love it, absolutely love it. Oh, that's the shipyard off in the distance. I was going, what are those thingies? But yeah, that's the shipyard off in the distance. Um, we can kind of see a view down into the, the dock area. So this is actually looking off towards the back of the ship. Oh, their, their raptor's already done. This guy's on his lunch break. Look at that. You go, Split. So, let's run all the way back here. We're just looking around, man. That's one of the things that makes the X Games stand out from, I don't know, almost damn near every other space sim out that's out there now, is this. The fact that you can buy these enormous capital vessels and and fly them can i jump down there oh i don't think i want to jump down there no it's not letting me anyways yeah i you you can't do this in elite dangerous i don't think you can do this in star citizen as far as i know i don't know that much about star citizen i've never played it i might someday if they ever finish it um the new the newer space sim that's out called spaceborn 2 I think maybe you can in that game. I'm I'm on the fence about that game. I, I certainly appreciate what that game's doing. Uh, and it's absolutely impressive, you know, being as how it's a single developer. But, you know, I don't know. The graphics are just a little too low quality for, for me. I don't know how much that would affect my enjoyment of it, you know. Uh, but, you know, never say never, right? So, yeah, we can't uh, we can't go past this point, but... This ship is so big. I mean, the bridge is like a mile away from us. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, let's go check out the bridge here. And we'll look at the other the other rooms as well. So probably the brig and the crew quarters are going to look like they do on any other capital-sized vessel. Yeah. 
It'd, it'd be cool if there was some way you could actually throw somebody in the brig. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're using some of the stories. I'm not sure. Okay, so that looks the same as always. I'm I'm guessing the crew quarters will probably also look exactly the same as they do on the, the others. But let's just take a quick peek at it. Yep. You think on a ship this large you'd have much larger crew quarters or maybe multiple crew quarters. They're, let's just assume that there is. Okay, let's go take a look at the bridge. Greetings. Greetings. Oh, this is neat. Walk through this little hallway here. We got the the mission board thingy. And the bridge of the raptor. Uh what's what's that? Is that part of the ship or is that something else? Oh, that's a she fighter. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say. My goodness. And those things are are a lot bigger than when you see them from down here than when they're flying, like everything else, right? Yeah, that's just a she sitting there. Very neat, man. Very neat. Okay. Let's go ahead and take command of the ship. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna assign I'm probably going to assign um uh Callie to this ship. She's currently piloting the Orca, but I'll put another pilot on the Orca. Okay, here we go. Maiden Voyage. Um, oh, I want the... Actually, hold on a second. Let's uh, tell the She's, because they're currently actually um, with the Irukandji. We want them to intercept for the Raptor. Okay. And then if we look at the Raptor, if we tell these guys to be docked, then they should Joining squad. automatically just uh, dock in the ship. Um, also, hold on, let me get my, let me plot a course here, because we, we're going to head to Argon Space first since it's closer and get our turrets fitted out. Uh, so let's go ahead and do, excuse me, start guidance to object. And Tharkas Cascade 15 is pretty safe to travel through now uh, because of our, our platform up here. So we'll just go through there. Every once in a while, a, a P or a, an N or T or whatever gets through, but not, not enough to worry about it, especially not in this ship. Okay, so here we go. Autopilot on because I want to watch. Let's watch the fighters dock. That's all the further it's going to let me zoom in. Can we? I think we can. Um, I'm going to look inside this way. Doesn't let me zoom in any further. I'll bet there's probably you guys can tell me in the comments. There's probably a mod out there that adjusts the camera better. But that's all the further the vanilla settings will let me zoom in, which kind of sucks. So those she's will go in there and... Oh, you know what we could do, actually, now that I think about it? Um... Autopilot, disengage. I, I want to pause the game so that... Or, hold on. I want to pause the game for a second so we can kind of see this happening before they all get docked. Uh, let's do this. Let's tell our captain... To just dock at the Argon Wharf and let them fly us. Don't 
talk and wait. Okay, so they'll take care of the flying. That way we can we can walk around and watch the show here. All right, so go to the dock area. Wait, that's not the dock area. That's the upper dock area, I think. Travel to... Oh, because they're all in internal storage. Can we go to this dock area? We should be able to go down there. Why can't we... I can't just go directly to the dock area. I have to go to an actual ship. Travel to the elevator closest to she. People? There. That's, that's kind of weird, man. Here we go. Oh, so I wonder if it has to be, I wonder if it has to be the fighter that's on this central platform, since that's the one that we, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'll have to figure this all out. Anyway, um, we have another she coming in to dock. Oh, I love this, you guys. Drop my car. This is so freaking cool. Uh, Vulture. Two is in trouble. Okay. Let's go take care of him. Uh, Vulture 2 works for the trading station, I think. Yes. Alright, so let's teleport to him. Autopilot. Disc Vulture entering system. Grand exchange. Okay, let's see where the bad guy is. Uh, oh, yeah, they're they're on intercepts, so they're already after him. Okay, so all we're going to do is um, let's target this guy. It's beyond your means. Raider. We're just going to travel drive away and watch this guy get his ass kicked. So, see, if, if I fly in sector like this, they kill him, like, literally within seconds. If I told them out of sector to kill this guy, it would take him 5, 10, 15 minutes to do it. It's just, I don't know. It's its a little frustrating because it means I have to take this extra step, but it's super effective is the thing. Okay. Well, there you go. Now we'll just tell this ship to uh, cancel the override. I know that it'll, it'll do it itself eventually, but we'll just do it now. Okay, let's get back to the raptor here. Uh, raptor. Teleport. Oh, there is Auto one other thing we are disengage. definitely going to do, though, Entering system on this save. Dominion. And that is that we're going to... Uh, we are going to start doing research uh, for mods. I d definitely want to do that. It's been on the to-do list, you know, pretty much since day one, but just haven't gotten around to it till now. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick in the travel drive. Look at this butte. Been waiting for a long time, you guys, to own one of these. Now we finally have one. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, well, I think what we're going to do, guys, is wrap up this episode here. So I'm going to take this down to Argon Space, get it fitted with its turrets, take it down to Terran Space, get it fitted with its shields, um, get its fighter wings set up, and then um, keep working on uh, getting our shipyard built. And the tentative plan for the next episode is we'll probably go ahead and start 
uh, working on research. And that does involve, from what I understand, it does involve some small little missions that we have to do, which will be kind of fun. And yeah, we'll go from there. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you.